morning everybody I'm up I'm in the van with Ash going to the hospital it's quarter past six in the morning I've got to be there for seven I've got my little letter um, nighty um, <sighs> that's about it really I've got, oh, I've got my numbing cream, my Emla cream for my hands, because I'm a bit needle phobic for the cannula. And I will see you all when it's done. So a recap really then, I'm having the hysteroscopy and the laparoscopy because, um, I've got, you know, a similar symptom to what Susie had when she was first uh, experiencing symptoms before she got diagnosed with her terminal cervical cancer. And I've pushed for them to check me out. Being an identical twin, they've guessed that I've got a fibroid. And they've also guessed that I've got endometriosis uh, they told Susie she had a fibroid without checking properly and uh, the catastrophic events that have followed that well uh, they've just they've broken our whole family and the friends and the, and the world that have listened to her story and I'm not having them guess with me or anyone else that watches my videos from when I started so yeah I'm gonna go get that checked out now and I will as soon as I'm well enough when I've come round I'll keep you all updated and just fingers crossed everything's um all right so I love you and leave you and I will see you soon I'm here, Ash has just dropped me off. Ah, I've got to put my big girl pants on and get this done. I'm my blood pressure, got my cream on, got my band on. Hi everybody, I'm home. I'm not sore. I'm okay. I've got a couple of nasty incisions. I'm going to get some rest and I'll give you a full breakdown and update. My mouth's so dry. I'll give you a full breakdown and update when I get a minute. But I love you lots. Thank you. Oh, everybody, Ash brought Cookie up to see me in bed. Oh, my darling. I love you. Thank you for coming to see me. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, my 
little baby girl. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. You're, you're so healing. Why are animals so healing? I love you so much. I say I love you, Auntie Susie. I love you, Auntie Sue's. You good girl. Always give your Auntie Sue's messages, don't you? Down the phone. Choo, choo, choo. <laughs> oh, guys, I've just taken my meds. I'm taking my meds and I feel... Sorry, it's a bit blurry. I don't think I've wiped my lens. I feel all right. She's brought me a cup of tea. <laughs> With my baby. <laughs> Oh, darling. Hmm. She's just asleep with her chin in my hand. She's so unbelievably precious. She must know that I'm a bit poorly. <laughs> oh, darling. She's doing that little chompy thing with her teeth. When rabbits are content, they chatter their teeth. And make little grunty sounds. And I can feel a little mouth going chee 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 chee. <laughs> My baby girl. Look at a little furry. I call it a little elephant head. A little furry elephant noggin. <laughs> oh, darling. I love you so much. Hi, you beautiful lot. I'm okay. So, I'm here. <clears throat> I've got a bit of a sore throat from where the tube went down. But I'm here to give you all an update of what happened yesterday and what was said. Um, uh, the, some mistakes that have been made, some answers, and what's going to happen moving forward. Uh, so first off, I've got some super thanks to give to Vicky J1958. Thank you so much, sweetheart. That's a massive help. Thank you so much. So, right then, taking it all back. As you know, my identical twin sister is at end of life care with um, cervical cancer. Her first symptom was an issue with her urinating and the pressure of her wee in and having to force, feeling like she was having to force it out. I had that symptom. So for months, I've obviously been terrified and fighting to get that checked out. At first, all I got was, you're not your sister. Uh, it's very unlikely, blah, blah, blah. Just being fobbed off. Um, as Susie was didn't turn out to be very unlikely for her did it so I managed to get oh, bear with me I'm still in a bit of pain I have to take some painkillers in a minute I managed to get a ultrasound <clears throat> where I told the sonographer that Susie's sonographer had told her she had a fibroid it wasn't and sent her home. My sonographer, after me telling him that story, turned the screen to me and told me exactly the same thing, that I had two fibroids <clears throat> and it was nothing to worry about. Of course, I lost, I lost my mind in that room then. And I said, have you not just listened to what I've said about my sister? And, um, how do you know that that's a fibroid? And he said, well, it's only seven in a million that aren't. And I said, well, one of them's my sister. And it's the seven people that matter. So that was, that was, 
not a good day. I, I then kept being fobbed off for weeks and months after that. So a GP friend of mine said, well, book in again and ask for another ultrasound because they're unlikely to decline that because they were declining my scan. They wouldn't, they wouldn't let me have a scan to see what was going on. <clears throat> so I booked in for another ultrasound three, three and a half months later. I think that was in March. And they said, again, that I had a fibroid, but they couldn't see the second fibroid. And I was like, right, okay. And then the radiologist came back to me and said, it's endometriosis. And again, I said, how do you know that that's a fibroid and that it's harm harmless and that I've got endometriosis until you go in and have a look into my womb regarding the fibroid, outside the room, womb regarding the endometriosis that apparently had breached my uterine wall into the muscle. And they sat there and they just said, and I said, you look a bit uncomfortable. You look a bit embarrassed because you don't know, do you? And they went, no, sorry, we don't know. And I said, right then, so you go in and have a look, please. I am begging you. And as you all know, that that, that appointment got cancelled three times up until um, last Thursday when my wonderful subscribers uh, contacted my MP. Thank you for sending me all the emails you've sent to them. You worded it so much better than me. I couldn't do it. I need to contact the MP back who wants to speak to me going forward, even though I got my operation yesterday. And you also, a lot of you also contacted Pinderfield Hospital. And lo and, lo and behold, on that Thursday, I got a call back saying they were awfully sorry and that my appointment was going to go ahead on Monday, which was yesterday. <sighs> Right, so, Ash set his alarm for, for four, half four, that morning, yesterday morning, bless his heart, to get all the animals ready and bring me a cup of tea so that I could have a cup, I had a cup of before I was allowed to stop, I had to stop drinking at 6am, um, or 5am, I had to be at the hospital for seven, so he dropped me off. I had a big cry and a, and a massive cuddle on the drop-off drop point. And he said, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, and just held me. And then I walked in to the hospital. Um, the gates didn't open till about seven and I got there a bit earlier. So I sat on the floor with a, a line of people waiting to go in. Um very nervous you know and then got to the reception desk obviously quite visibly anxious and upset so I booked myself in and I said is there anywhere else I can sit so that I don't upset anybody else that's waiting and she she said yeah come with me and then she took me into another waiting room on my own where I just sat and tried to compose myself and you know I'm not I, nobody likes going in for operations and I'm a bit of a needle phobe which is bizarre when I've had it you know I had a gastric band which is adjusted via a needle <laughs> um and then I had the gastric band removed and the revision surgery you know I, I'm not I'm not I've had quite a few surgeries in my time <laughs> from dangerous hobbies and and procedures and things like that but it's, it still gets me you know Susie and Joe are so incredibly brave I have to have numbing cream oh it's all bruised look numbing cream because I'm a wuss so um I then went in had some bloods taken and the phlebotomist was also going through it with her sister Oh, so we had a hug you know that these people continue to work you know like me they've got jobs 
and they're going through hell. And um, anyway, then they said I was going to be first on the list and theatres opened at half eight in the morning. So I'm there, I'm just getting myself ready. Um, I saw the anaesthetist and I just begged him to please look after me. Tell me when I need to put my numbing cream on. So he did. He said, you can put it on now. So I did. Then I got taken down. You put your bags and don't take anything valuable with you. But I did. I had my purse and my phone and a little rucksack with my nightie in and my Crocs. Because I don't really, I didn't really have any slippers or a dressing gown. I only have my winter dressing gown and it's too hot. So they put those in a locked locker for you and wait till you you're back in recovery and stuff and they bring them back to you and then I went down to theatre had my little panic attack on the bed and it didn't even say count to ten or anything it gave me a sedative and I just went off um, I woke in recovery to be told everything was fine and I said to the nurse, what do you mean everything's fine with me? She went, no, everything's fine. They've, they've told us everything's fine with you, all your worries that you had. And then the surgeon came round and he said, you, it's endometriosis and we've cut it all away. And I was like, oh, right, right, okay. And I said, what about the fibroids? And he said, you didn't have any fibroids. So I was like, and then I just thought back to those two sonographers who told me that I had fibroids. They shouldn't be allowed to do that because I didn't have fibroids. I never did. I had a, I had a chronic, I have a chronic condition called endometriosis, which obviously for years I've just cracked on with that pain, thinking it was down to a car accident or in the latter months, fibroids. If I if I hadn't have pushed to go, to get this operation, I'd have been I'd have been living with chronic endometriosis that that is eating up more of my body without me even knowing, and I wouldn't have gone back to the doctor. This is what we're trying to change. You know, they shouldn't be allowed to to give you a diagnosis when it's not their job. This headboard, this white headboard. For years, I used to I used to get out of bed. And the pain was so bad, I used to have to hold onto the headboard to roll myself out of bed. Oh, God. So this is obviously what it was. Anyway, I said to him, what about the urination problems? Because my first symptom, uh, Susie's first symptom was not being able to urinate properly. And I had that. And he said, well, I didn't, I didn't check into that. It's the endometriosis that I do. But I looked at your bladder and it was fine. And I looking back to my band to gastric bypass revision in Istanbul, I had a full I had full body scans which showed that my bladder was fine. So I've done some more research into endometriosis and it can affect excuse me that's dry. It can affect your your wee flow but I'm not, I'm not stopping there. I've got to go back next Tuesday because they've tied both my ovaries with a suspension suture to the wall of my tummy, which I didn't really want to hear and didn't want to go back for anything. And I've got to go back next Tuesday. I think that's while everything heals, they've pulled them out of the way and get that suspension suture snipped and taken out either side. Um... And then I've got to go back in four months for a follow up. But then I'm going to see, I'm going to track my wee flow and what it's like throughout my cycle and, and moving forward. And if it's not any better or changed or I'm going to then move forward to speak to a urologist and see what's going on there. But at the moment, there's nothing sinister to worry about. And Susie's been so worried about me and she's got so much to worry about herself. It's not fair. Again, I would swap places in a heartbeat 
and take it all away from her if I could. But I can't. So I've got to fight for me. And we've all got to fight for each other and ourselves now. And save everybody for her. So I'm, I'm home with um, paracetamol and codeine, which seems to be all right. I'm all, I, I only get the odd. I'm getting some twinges and a, and a bit sore, but I've got four incisions. I'm not going to show you guys. I might put a pic on Instagram if anyone's. Nah, well, you know, no one's going to want to see. But I've got one on. I've got one on my belly button that goes in there to either side here and one about four inches below my belly button um and when ash get her when ash gets home today i'm gonna have a shower and change these dressings um and then just get get back into bed and let it let it all heal um so that's that if anyone's got any other questions please put them in the comments and let me know because there's so, there's so many questions and again I'm new to this so if endometriosis is new to me there's so much I'll need to learn I'll need to ask what what happens going forward what treatment what what are the next steps how do I live with this Cause some people don't live with it you know they don't work it stops them from working. It, it's not going to... I'm fine. I've grafted with it for a long time. And they've cut... He said he's cut loads out. I saw some photos when the nurse came round to check on me. I saw some photos poking out of my my um, notes. And I said, can I please look at them? Are they photos of my insides? And she said, yeah. And I said, can I have a look? And she went, if you want. And I said, yeah, I do. And I mean, I don't really know. I can see my ovaries. Weird. And I think what the two little marks on them is the suture mark. But there was like, there was red sort of spots in it. In, there was about 18 photos, I think. Um, six on th three sheets, as far as I can remember. And I said, is that the endometriosis growing through the wall? And she went, yes. Yeah. Is that what caused all my pain for all, all these years? And she went, yes. Yeah. So how can that and she said well, it's not if it's not supposed to be in your body it can cause you pain i was like wow wowzers um so yeah drop drop me any other questions you want to drop me you're all lifting me up with your messages um i'm so thankful i didn't i don't i didn't ask for any of this i don't deserve any of this but Every single comment and message I get gives me a gives me a minute of my heart smiling in all in all this shit. And Iram, <laughs> you're just a you're just a little sweetheart. Thank you for sending me these beautiful little stamps. And these are the ones with the sentiments on that I have to unfortunately use. If I'm sending a card to my clients where they've they've lost one of their animals or I know that seems sad, but I, I've wanted these stamps so that I can make the cards for them. Um, a handmade lovely card for them to keep. Yeah, I've known their animals for years and I've known them for years and then they lose one of their pets. I can make a, a beautiful card for them with all my little stamps and stuff. And wow, Joe brought me some stunning watercolour pencils and you've just added to my collection and these look it comes in this beautiful carry case and there's so many oh so many all different colours but they're different colours to what Joe sent and a little book so I'm gonna have so much fun with them doing all my little doodles and my crafts but just keep my mind ticking over you know when I'm when you're not doing anything you 
your your mind that is already in a in a horror filled pit can go much further. But if I'm if I'm keeping busy, I'm doing something. It it goes away for a bit. So that's my update, my angels. I love you, Sue, so much. I love you, Mum. I love I love you all. And I, I don't think I've replied to a few messages through Instagram and stuff, but I'm I'm really tired. And I've needed the sleep to get over the emotional trauma as well. And um, I'll catch up with you all again when I can. I'll start daily vlogging again. Might not be tomorrow, but we'll see. And um, yeah, keep keep on keeping on. Keep looking after each other. Uh, jo is still in hospital. She, she'll update you when she can. She's had a, a lot going on. I'm not sure if they're operating yet. They're still trying to decide. And there's lots going on regarding antibiotics and her bones. She's seen the bone doctor. There's loads going on. I haven't been able to keep up with it, though, because my mind's not been... I haven't been all with it. But she will... She's she's OK. I've sp spoke to her again on the phone today. And she's all right. She wants you to know she's OK. So, yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. I know it's been a chatty one, please. I hope you've got to the end of this to, to learn more about it. Um, and if you have, if you've got to the end of the, of the end of this, leave me a little, leave me a little heart emoji. So I know you've got to the end. A green one for peace, a little green heart emoji. And I know you've got to the end and listened to it all. And I love you so much and I will see you soon. And I will be smiling all through it. I promise. I promise. Mm -hmm.